Welcome back, everybody, to another exciting episode of Full Circle. I'm your host, as always, with the most, the best, want to be the very best, all that good stuff, Odo Harmon Jr. Social media, at Odo Harmon Jr. And I'm George Fredette. You can find me at social media at Toon Velo. We have another exciting show for you today at the top of the hour. Um, well, backwards to the top of the hour. We're talking about My Hero Academia. That's right, season four is coming out. Um, it got delayed a week because of a tsunami, a hurricane. It's already out. No, I mean, um, yeah, but there was a like a slight delay in the broadcast. Oh. Anywho, but we're not talking about that specifically because that would be a bunch of spoilers. We'll be talking about My Hero Academia, Vigilante. Woo. Didn't hear about it? Now you did. Also, continuing our spooky theme of Halloween, we're going to talk about what fantasy worlds we would love to spend All Hallows Eve in. And first and foremost, we'll be talking, predictably probably, uh, <laughs> about Pokemon. That's right. Uh, I don't know if we've ever talked about it before on the show, um, but we're pretty big fans. And we have more updates now coming at us from Sword and Shield. Woo! So the game is officially less than a month away, Jerry. Woo! Uh, uh, Alright, and to celebrate that, they've opened up a pop-up shop, Pokemon Center, in Jolly Old London. Across the pond. Well, it's Jolly Old England, so does that make Jolly Old... Is London Jolly Old as well? Old, It's Old London Town. Okay, in Old London Town, there we go. So if you're there, please go there. Buy the Pikachu with the bowler hat and the umbrella with the Psyduck. What do you call it? What's the thing you put on top of the umbrella? Handle. Handle, yes. Anyway, I want that London exclusive Pikachu. It looks amazing. And we will give you anything you want. Anything. Anything. So, yeah. So, celebrate that. The store is going to be open until November 16th, 17th. Basically, a day or two after the game releases. Uh Uh-huh. So, but we got a new trailer showcasing a lot of things and... Fat Pikachu. Yes. That's all we're talking about. That's all, that's, this, this show's actually just a big love letter to Fat Pikachu is back, and we love him. Or as uh, I like to call him, OG Pikachu. Mm-hmm, as this, yeah. Back in our day, we just called him Pikachu. You know what? I like that. <laughs> good point. That is a good point. Back in the day, we did just call him Pikachu. So that's cool. Oh, real quick, before I go on to Pokemon news. Also... Besides the trailer, all the previews from all the major gaming outlets was released, so we got a whole bunch of brand new information. But first, what was showcased in the trailer? Jared already said it. Fat Pikachu. And we got a whole bunch of Gigantamax first generation Pokemon. We got Fat Pikachu. Long Big, Meowth. Long Meowth. That's interesting. Like, like I know people hate it, but I, something about him is like... He, he strikes a chord in your heart for memes. <laughs> Maybe. We, we got Flame Hardest uh, Charizard. You know... I like how Charizard looks. I I like that better than any of its mega designs. Yes. Gigantamax designs, as much as the mechanic, I may not like it from a certain standpoint. The it's designs... Just, Gigantamax is just a fusion between mega and Z forms. That's all it is. Fair enough. I do like their designs, though. We got Mothra Butterfree. It's true. And uh, else in the trailer, we got... Well, actually, I don't know. That was just it. We just got Gigantamax. There's four. Yeah. Yeah. So, new information about the game. So, Game Informer, IGN, Nintendo Life, etc. They all got to tell us about the first hour and a half of the game. So, some of my interesting points is that I know Jared likes... Apparently, everyone speaks the Queen's English in the game. Quite. So, your mom is not mum. And mum. You know, your mum's letting you go on an adventure. Vroom, vroom. Get out the car. <laughs> you know, we got a whole bunch of insert English slang slang because I don't know it. But apparently... One review, one preview said that brush up on your English slang. They use it quite a lot, which just makes me think it's funny. Like when someone's like, "Oh, go off to the veranda," no, 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 no. I'm like, "Where did they tell me to go?" I, I, can, I, I, can, I, I, can you post this to America, like just with a tack? Like, uh, no, they want you to mail it. To, uh, sorry, can you can you post this to the Kanto region? <laughs> Ship it, mail it. Yeah, like once until we'll, like we'll have to do a uh, post. Post game release uh, Britishisms and just like translate things for so, you. So fun fact: in the original game, when you had to go pick up Oak's parcel, I didn't know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> is this it? <laughs> no. Is this it? No. I'm never gonna leave <laughs> Pallet Town. Yeah, like every like little kid me read that was like a parasol, and I'm like, what? what? 
That's a parasail. <laughs> not like the thing you fly on. Parcel, that's not a thing. You must have meant parasail. <laughs> Which is still a pretty advanced word for a kid. And so, like, it's a jolly holiday with me. <laughs> so, you know, everything is the little Pokeball shape for an item. So, when I gave it to him, in my mind, I was like, what is this? Are these, what, what are you doing with this? I thought these were called Pokeballs. <laughs> called parcels? So, I feel, I feel like there might be one moment in the game where someone tells me to, I'm on a fetch quest, and, like, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing. Cool, I'm pretty sure I'm going to figure it out, but from the words, I'm going to be like, all right, that cage right there, so I'm assuming that... Oh, go to the old digger and get me a Schmidt. I'm like, well, there's a cave right there. You're like, okay, yep, I got you. Got you clear and uh, boop, boop, boop. Yep, got you clear and <laughs> sound and clear. Also, so the wild area is more massive than we thought. It is a huge chunk of the game which has dynamic weather, which it was alluded. Some people are speculating. They didn't really say they probably couldn't that... Maybe there's like an in-game forecast, or if you remember from Black and White, maybe there's like an actual seasonal thing, like Mondays, it snows, Tuesday, whatever, whatever mm-hmm. the case may be. But the wild area is massive and free to explore at your will. The only thing stopping you are powerful Pokemon in certain areas. That's right. It's just like an RPG. Are you supposed to, are you supposed to leave the town in beginnings and go left? Hell no. There's a gigantic level 100 Snorlax blocking your way. That's, he's not going to stand there statically like that stupid Sudowoodo or that <laughs> tiny army of Psyducks. He will attack. They said the powerful Pokemon, when you get in their area, uh, actively chase you. So I guess you can try to sidestep them, but eventually someone will catch you. And you can't catch them, so no, you're not going to get to level 70 Snorlax, Best be Queen, or what have you. Can't even just Master Ball your way out of that. I don't know. At that point, by the time you get the Master Ball, why you would use it on a Pokemon like that, but... Yeah, so this is looking out to be very different from our typical formula. Can we not formula. use Master Balls on these Pokemon? Well, I figure, what, what if Will it just, like, not let you throw the ball? Well, I figure by the time you... That undermines the whole purpose of a Master Ball. Well, one, assuming by the time you get a Master Ball, uh-huh. you should already be well into the game. Yeah. And that's someone, like... And maybe it's like an untradeable item. Maybe they thought ahead. And two, you can't throw Pokeballs at all because, I mean, even if it's level 60, you can still, at full health, or maybe try to grind it down and just hope for the best. There's still a possibility. So, no, I don't know what the force is. I don't know if it's like, Pokemon's so strong, it's just like, bah! I think it's just, you know, you just click at it and it goes, Oak's voice, you can't use that here. <laughs> but wh- who's Oak? You know, I think it well, is like exerting like a massive pressure, you know, like the move is just like you try to throw a Pokemon, but the Pokemon's pressure like kept you from doing you're, it. You're you're too scared to like reach for your Pokeballs. Yeah, so Sword and Shield's coming out and you know, it's looking to be a great game. Supposedly, according to these reviews previews, excuse me, there's literal more new Pokemon in this game than previous Pokemon games, and I took that as, you know, Is you there a Dunsparce? I need Dunsparce! There is no word on Dunsparce yet. Ah, Dex it now! You made the right choice, Jared. Thank you. You you scared me a little bit. (laughs) Sorry. So speaking of being scared... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before we leave the Pokemon topic... Before we leave the Pokemon... I'm sorry. But, uh... Well, at first I thought you were going to mention about the size comparison between... Oh, no, yeah, no, go ahead, yeah. Right, so... uh, Breath of the Wild is something like 13 gigs plus or minus DLC... Pokemon Sword and Shield is going to be a uh, 10. 10 point something, but we're just calling it even 10. Right, so we're looking at a pretty good, massive game here. Um, can you believe, like, that wouldn't even fit on, like, old time, like, jump drives? No, uh, yeah, by comparison, I think the next closest Pokemon game in size is, like, 3 gigs. That's completely crazy. Um,. Yeah. And we already know that's not going to graphic fidelity, so. I feel like. I feel, no, I mean, this is the, the game looks. It is the best looking Pokemon game, period. That right. is just a fact. You but, know, by, by today's standard, I'm pretty sure it just looks like an average game. I was going to say, let me go and throw in another, right? Like, since we talked about Dexit and new models and such, mm-hmm. like you said in a tweet, like, models are not rigs. So if they had the same movement. Speaking of horrors, wait, I'm skipping forward. <laughs> um. Right, like, you can have the same model placed on top of an old rig. and we, Pokemon has only promised new models. Now, even if the models look the same, 
Right, you, you can do a lot to a model to make it much cleaner and more efficient. Like maybe you didn't notice it's clipping, maybe the smooth arc of a shoulder has like 13 points in it that are excessive and waste data, right? So like when you're designing things, you can optimize that. You can just start new and be like, okay, now that I know how to do this, you can just like on, news, on a new rendering, a new software, you can just say make a shoulder and it just knows to have that without the extra extrapolated points that you have to put along the way. So don't harp here along too much about the models not looking fresh new. Yeah, and clearly you know a side of the bringing back national decks argument we are on. And I must, I need to make this clear. At the end of the day, you are allowed to be upset. You are allowed to feel whatever you feel. I'm not telling you that, even though I horribly disagree with it. But the game has yet to come out. From a personal standpoint, I feel like you cannot complain about a product you have yet to experience. You can't even, in, in all classic games, you can't even bring in your old Pokemon to adventure with until you've beat the adventure. You have to like usually beat the Elite Four and then they go, oh, we've unlocked a new fancy thing called the National Dex. And you'll go, okay, cool. And you just bring them in and then, my thing is, a lot of people say they don't want competitive battles. So I'm like, if you're not using them for competitive battles, when you bring them in, what do you do with them besides walk around? Oh boy, I can finally go back to Pallet Town and beat all those Caterpie with my level 99 Sceptile. Because you're evil? <laughs> but okay, so but the announcement I cut you off for that I wanted that want to mention while we're on the top of Pokemon is that we just gave away the SNES. Congratulations again. I promise that's in the mail. But we're already on to our next giveaway. So it is Pokemon related and it is coming out this fall. So follow, share, subscribe, uh, and more details will be coming your way. And when? And and when? Oh, oh and fall, when. Yes. Right, and when. <laughs> You're like, when what? And fall, I just said that. <laughs> You're just like, Odell, they were never going to win anything. <laughs> We just wanted the follows and likes. <laughs> the people they're just made up Twitter accounts. That's really just us. Oh my gosh. That's too much effort. <laughs> That's too much effort. No, they're real people getting real prizes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they will be tweeting it out soon whenever it arrives in the mail. Yes. Who won that, by the way? I do not have the Twitter handle uh memorized. Okay. It appears here on the screen. Yay. Congratulations, you. There you are. Okay. So your segue. Oh, Jared, you scare me. Speaking, Speaking of, of scary. scary. <laughs> so, Halloween is an experience across several universes and platforms. Are you about to say Christmas? Are you about to say Halloween is Christmas? A little bit. <laughs> um, Even you know in your heart. <laughs> so, where would, so, where would you most like to spend a Halloween? I, one of the places I would like to spend Halloween is in the Kill I Kill universe. Since clothing is literal power. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, you have, like, a spooky costume. Like, and, you know, whatever you're wearing usually gives you power related to that. Uh -huh. Like when Michael's the sports captain, all her attached are, like, sports themes and bats and balls and all sorts. So, I'm like, so if I'm wearing, like, you know, a spooky costume of, I don't know, like, a werewolf, now do I have, now when I do my little magical boy transformation mm -hmm. no no there's still magical girl transformation all right there, my, it's it's a gender neutral term oh excuse me my magical girl transformation <laughs> you know you know well i have like you know werewolf claws or just werewolf related abilities and powers it just, it would just be if i don't like aesthetically when you transform it's still remnants of the uniform you're wearing so mm -hmm. imagine like you know Halloween day at school or the academy, and then just like everyone's just like, ah, three star battle regalia. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, I think that'd be cool. Okay. Uh, mine was a little less out of the box. I like your answer a lot. I'm a little <laughs> jealous I didn't think of it. Um, I was going to say, and stay with me here, the Archie and Jughead universe, because technically that's the universe Sabrina the Teenage Witch is from. So, because you know that the you know the Spellmans get up to all sorts of shenanigans on Halloween. I mean, all witches, I assume, but we always see them. So I would just love. We don't want to assume all witches are into it. Um, <laughs> in their universe, they are. 
Um, so I didn't really have a good explanation for that. I just like that they had a bunch of shenanigans going on, like that are really important for those days. I mean, no, I mean that's fair. It's a universe where Halloween is important and they do fun stuff, and they're the cool witches, the cool ant witches. They got Salem, but only in the universe where Salem talks, not that Netflix one where he doesn't talk. I, I'm trying to remember. I think he said like one word once. Ugh. Why Why isn't that Netflix season three come out yet? Whatever. All right. Also, another one that I really thought would be cool was Finn Halloween. And obviously, it's just Pokemon because, I mean, it, <laughs> I mean it's, a, it's a simple answer. But no, because they always have special themes. Like, you know, some there's always going to be one town or maybe in several towns where, you know, they have like the ghost Pokemon only tournament. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I just think it would be cool. Just because, again, the Pokemon world is not that different from the real world. It's almost like it's a one for one in the real world just with Pokemon thrown into it. And I've, I always love festival battles where it's like the water festival, the this festival. Like, you know, everyone's like, you know, everyone gets spring. So, you know, everyone has their best ghost Pokemon. Everything's spooky. Mm-hmm. But since it's the Pokemon universe, it's like that fun spooky. And then, you know, at the, you know, stroke of 10 or 11, you know, you have the ghost Pokemon tournament, which I would enter with, you know, whatever ghost Pokemon I happen to have, mm-hmm. or, you know, the two I have, you know, it just, it just seems like it'll be fun. You know, that, that, that fun Halloween and kids movies where it's like, everyone's festive, mm-hmm. every, and everything's only spooky, but never legit scary, and like, no death. Mm-hmm. Like, when I was younger, I always wanted to have like, a Halloween I saw in the movies, where it was just like, you know, candy and fun, and tricks and treats, and ghouls and goblins, and Say, fun to eat. Let me let me hop onto that, and interject my, my second one, is actually the Bob's Burger universe, because... <laughs> No, like you said, like literally the whole town gets involved and wrapped it up in the spirit. Like all the all the adults also wear costumes, and all the stores participate in fun. I, I just love the Bob's Burgers universe. Like every every store and restaurant is a pun, and they have fun with it. Like every weekend they have a farmers market. I'm like, this is a great town to live in. <laughs> like we, there, you always have just tons of activities to do. That's, um, fair. That's fair. Yeah, like you, I'm I'm actually not a huge fan of like joke costumes but if their joke costumes are not just on point it's just it's great like one of the recent ones lynn was a sheriff a uh, share like a sheriff like the singer like the singer and then but also like a because she's got a, a badge handcuffs and a body that won't quit <laughs> you know what? I, I don't you know i put joke costumes this thing i'm just not a fan of bad costumes so like I feel like a joke costume that's bad is just in the, it's a bad costume. Right. I, but, want, a, but, I want a high brow uh, joke costume. Yeah, Those like, are the good ones. Yeah, like Sheriff. Like, if I saw, like, a Sheriff in real life, I'd be like. Again, I think my all-time favorite is one of Louise's. She was the dragon with the girl tattoo. Instead of the dragon. Ah, with the, instead of the girl uh, with the dragon tattoo. My, my brain automatically put that Okay, correctly. okay. We need, to, we need to lower the brow a little bit for that one. <laughs> No, no, uh, like, uh, uh, you know, it's like that thing where you read a sentence that's incorrect, you're like, but, your that's bra- not right. but your brain corrects the sentence automatically, yeah. which is, I feel is what your brain does when you make typos on the internet. Because, like, you post a tweet, and you're like, yeah, and then you go back and read it the second time, you're like, I-, I swear before I hit send, those words were in the correct order and spelled correctly. And now, like, I've looked away and looked at it again. My no, brain no. has, like, reset, and it's just like... You spell they're wrong, therefore you lose all arguments ever. Yes, my credibility. Forget all my amazing points... You've been owned, <laughs> banished from the internet. Don't you feel ashamed? I like that thing you said one time. You're like, just know when you physically speak there, you're always saying the wrong there. Yeah. <laughs> just, just so you know, grammar Nazis, I'm always saying the wrong thing. You'll just never ha- know. <laughs> and it's so okay. So my my last one. Oh, we have to have three. Oh, okay. Well, no, we, have it. okay. I'll think of one. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> so it's a little quirky, but I was like. I guess the Mario Odyssey universe, even though I guess it's technically the regular universe, just going to like other plant, whatever, just that game. Because I was just like, you know, I want Cappy's ability, just like on Halloween, just be like, oh man, that guy has a really cool costume. Yoink! I have a really cool costume. <laughs> Plus this hat on it for whatever reason. I don't know why. Like, in my body would just be like, I don't have to dress up. I just put on my special cap and I just like frisbee toss it at people who have cool costumes. And I on them. Fair enough. Fair enough. 
Okay, the, the third one I thought of right now in this very second. Um, I was watching Gravity Falls today, so I'm going to go with Gravity Falls. I love their Summerine episode. I love that, again, kind of this is kind of piggybacking on my uh, Sabrina pitch, but it's a world where actual supernatural fun things happen. Like, it's a paranormal hub, the town. So you know something fun has got to occur during that time. You know what? It was fun about, it's interesting about that show. Even though it's fun... Their supernatural things actually hold real danger and weight to them. That's something that I always respect about Gravity Falls. Even though it was a kid show, you know, like, probably no one's going to die. But, like, the, with the... Dipper, th- what's the one thing I asked you not to do tonight? Raise the dead. And what did you do? Raise the dead. <laughs> but, no, like, every episode when there's danger, there's a real weight to it. And I've always appreciated that show because, like I said, logically, you know, no one's probably going to be hurt or die. But the sense of real danger, it wasn't like those, like, it wasn't Scooby-Doo danger, like, oh, you know, this was like, oh, man, like, this thing's really trying to kill them. Oh, yeah. With legit effort. Oh, yeah. Not like the, I'm going to get you. Ah, it's like, axe, right there, hair split, a little blood. It's like, mm. mm-hmm. No, no, the, uh, I was punched, and now I have three red lines. That's it. Or I was bit, and I just have three red lines. Is it always three or something? It's always like it's always just like they sustain some sort of terrible injury, and it's just like ah. Actually, Steven Universe did that too when he got like acid spilled on him. He's just like ah, red lines. I was like okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Hate that line from the movie. Ah, oh no, my organic based jacket. I'm like we get it, we get it. This stuff hurts organic things. You really, you emphasize that too much there. I don't know. I don't know, cert- certain children need a little extra push. Oomph. You, you but, know, I will say this. We've talked about this. People will go on the internet and complain about something. This was never stated, but they clearly just stated it once. So sometimes maybe creators are just like, for the people in the back, to, to stop this argument from happening, <laughs> just we one more time. Well, speaking of Halloween and all the wonderful costumes that it comes with that and treats and costumes, and I keep emphasizing the word costume here because we're moving on to My Hero Academia, Vigilantes. So, we may have briefly touched about this, but My Hero Academia has a spin-off series. It's not, a, it's not an anime yet, which, God, it really needs to be. It really needs to be because it's a really good show. They have a spin-off manga, manga called My Hero Academia Vigilantes, which follows three characters that we've never seen before in the series. Three people that are not heroes. They're just regular civilians. One is a boy who just wants to be a hero, but he he failed the hero exam for various reasons. Mm-hmm. You know, and so he was forced to live a life of just mediocrity. One is a is a pop star, like a she uses her abilities to be an idol. Her goal is to be an idol, and her quirk aids into her doing that. So she puts on impromptu illegal shows, and using her quirk is able to just quickly run away right and the other one is a quirkless man batman am i wrong (laughs) he's an old man who seems to have access to things and just runs around punching people that sounds exactly like batman he doesn't he doesn't use gadgets i'll give him that doesn't he have he has iron knuckles he has yes he has he has i would exactly call that a gadget a low tech gadget it's like oh god like Gee, Gallagher's Batman. How are we going to get out of this? Robin, all I, all I need is, I don't know. My bat fist <laughs> Yeah, just, I'll try to think of a pun, you know, of like, all I need is pain and glory. You know, like, you know how people like, give their... I've come to kick butt and chew bubble gum. <laughs> but yeah, so I really would call it like, oh, crap, elaborate thing. Hold on, I got my iron knuckles. Pa 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 pa. You, you just punch the wall down. Yes. So, <laughs> but anyway. so Batman jokes aside, the premise of the show is right. So the main hard rule in Japan, at least, is that only heroes may exercise their quirks in public. Yeah. And we're led to believe Under, this is probably a global law. No, no, right? Because yeah. the movie I Island specifically shows that it's a island free of people. To use their quirks whenever and however they want. That's specifically on that artificial island, though. Yeah, but you can't. So it's not a global. Fair so enough, so enough. we can only say with certainty that within Japan, okay, it is a is... hard and fast rule, ironclad rule, that you cannot use your quirk. That was ultimately made to keep society in check when quirks came about and there was chaos. Right. You can't have thirteen untrained civilians arbitrarily rushing in to save somebody. That's just a recipe for. Getting more people hurt than should be. Or the, ult- the other rule, you just can't have people 
just firing off things and doing things. Right. So, yeah, we get why it was made, but, like, there was severe and no, it wasn't well thought of. It was a it was a quick fix to a problem. It was, you know, it was the whole putting a Band-Aid on a crack on a dam. Right. This may hold now, but this needs to be further addressed. Right. And this is fun because this is kind of the whole essence of uh, the villain, uh, all for ones, his whole mantra, right? It's just, like, he wants to change. He doesn't want to, like, beat the heroes. He wants to change people's way of thinking. Um like, is this, is it fair that the heroes have all the power? You know, he has more sinister, sinister motives, but that is, that, that is, that is the, the, kind that, of the underlying point here. Yeah, that's the, that is the earworm that he's trying to get out to lead to, you know, people having a revolution of sorts, but ultimately, like, there's, like you said, sinister undertones the, the, behind that. The downfall of hero culture. Um, and yeah, so our main... Batman, I'm just going to call him Batman. Batman uh, guy, it has the same point. It's like, you know, heroes are only called in for emergencies. But, like, your friend being beat up in an alley, the heroes aren't going to come in swoop for that. They don't... Unless they just literally happen to be passing by. Right. And even then, as we see... Because the other great thing about this series is we get a lot of backstory of our actual heroes. So yeah. so early on, we run into um, Racerhead. And he's they get in a fight, and he goes, Oh, wait. You're quirkless. Never mind. And just walks off. Mm-hmm. So if two quirkless people are fighting, the heroes go, hmm, not our jurisdiction. Yeah. And, but, but, you know, but a murderer is still a murderer. So yeah. someone should do something. Yeah. And I remain here. He has a, I'm going to call it propulsion power. Because, like, we, we it's, it's kind of shown as, like, kind of like a suction cup thing. Like, he can just stick to things. No, no, his power yeah. is sliding. Yeah. Like, he instantly gets to, uh, move yeah i know I'm, I'm saying like since he's never been able to use his power like like the good we we learn what it actually is it's one of those things remember when they talk about the quirk registry quirk when you're like mm-hmm. oh my power is i can shoot water oh actually my real power is i can absorb water from the atmosphere and then shoot it out yeah so and the thing is i like since he's never been able to you know he's had his power collared mm-hmm. as the show goes on he learns what his power really is and what it can really do but he uses it for mundane things sticking to things like like, oh, like, I don't feel like walking. I'm just going to kind of just glide along. And, you know, he gets in trouble for that. He's just like, oh, like, if he's running a little late, he can't. And when I say glide, like, he, at first, to Bicycle him. Bicycle speed. At best. Yeah. Th- that was, like, his top speed. Like, they literally show, showcase people but you know he can be ticketed for that and ultimately like you know he saw like you know there's things that happens and there's things he can do he literally starts off as like a community service person just you know literally picking up trash a public servant and then you know ultimately team up with those three and then led by knuckle duster is his name i finally remember it there we go right because the uh knuckle and duster you know, it leads them to more heroic efforts. And, you know, he remembers, you know, he gets this light that, you know, he always wanted to be a hero. And ultimately, always winds up organically, using that word again, right. and bigger and bigger events. It's not like, it doesn't, it's very slow paced in the right way where it's not like, oh, I want to be a hero. And now, like, we're doing, like, world saving crisis. Right. It's very much a neighborhood that, you know, gets developed into bigger and bigger things. So... I, we'll just cap this off now here. Um, it feels like a good point to end on. Uh, go ahead and check this out. Like we said, there isn't an anime for it yet, but there is a manga. It's been out since 2017. Yeah. There's over, like, 60 chapters of it already. Yeah. I did not realize this till like, last week. It's a monthly manga, so, or bi-weekly. So, basically, you get a, you get chapters it's a little meatier than the average. Yeah. You know, sometimes you get the occasional, like, 12 page, but they run, like, usually, like, 25 to 36. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to get a lot of content, a lot of world building for the My Hero Academia universe. Yeah, and I don't know, like, we haven't had word that's officially canon, but I feel like it is how it it, it carefully operates in the world that's already been presented. And even when it introduces characters that we already know and love, it never breaks, you know, the cycle where it's not interjecting new things. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's really great. Yeah. Uh, that concludes this week's episode for Full Circle Podcast. I'm Jared Fredette. You can find me at Toon Velo. And I'm Odo Harmon Jr. You can find me at Odo Harmon Jr. Remember, we're having another sweepstakes giveaway. It's Pokemon related. So like, share, subscribe. We'll be tweeting out that promo net. And it's going to be a big one. Big one. So Possibly our biggest yet. Dun, dun, dun.
ました Have a good week. <laughs> oh, I, I, I really thought, yeah. Have, have a great week, everybody.